Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. As you know, Denmark is a very social democratic, very left-wing country with high taxes and with a very, very luxurious welfare state. As you all know, you can have open borders or a welfare state in the long run. You must pick and choose. And the more generous and large this welfare state is, well, the sooner the country realizes that it can't go on like that. And that is the reason why, even though Denmark is ruled by a left-wing government with a social democratic female prime minister, Mette Frederiksen, has the goal of keeping these very expensive guests outside of Denmark, outside of the country. Mette Frederiksen has said that she thinks that um, this influx of foreign people is paid by the lower classes in Denmark and that is also a very fitting interpretation of social democratic or socialist politics when you say hey what is in the benefit of our working class here isn't that what originally and truly the social democrats were all about so this can be described maybe as socialism with a more national or nationalist mindset very interesting approach, I think. So in today's presentation, I want to look at the facts. I want to look at the economic data behind this opinion of Mette Frederiksen. And that is the net fiscal impact of different groups of travelers in Denmark. I also want to compare this more recent data to some older data from Denmark. And I also want to tell you why I would like to make this presentation about Germany, but I couldn't find any data on that obviously, as you might imagine. And if you know some of that data, maybe I just didn't look thoroughly enough, then please let me know in the comments down below. But first of all, I want to remind you once more of the underlying principles and the graphs and the methods that are used here. And I talked about this in the past. It was a very interesting study from New Zealand that looked at the different contributions and the different benefits that uh, men and women in New Zealand are receiving by age. And that was a very interesting study. It found out that uh, women as a group are not net contributors to society, of course, only in a strict financial sense that is they have of course other contributions but if you only look at the taxes paid and the benefits received maybe from um, public medical systems and the retirement system and the school system and so on if you add and subtract all these numbers you get a net financial or net fiscal impact of the group that you are looking at and the result back then for New Zealand was that men are net contributors while women over the course of their lifespan only contribute in a very narrow age window and if you look at their cumulative so added up over the years contribution they never turn positive. So this is data from 2010 and it shows that women as a group I financially or fiscally or uh, economically, whatever you want to call it, they are not net contributors. And now you can play the same game with the same kind of methodology for different groups in Denmark. Now let's look at some older data from the year 2000 and there you can see that native Danes pay more taxes also over the entire course of their lifespan of course as migrants do and while migrants have some kind of positive impact you might wonder what kind of migrants are these Chinese people are these Germans who is this and then when you make the distinction between western migrants and non-western migrants you see that at no point almost but just for this very almost isolated data point at around 50 years, they are net contributors, the non-Western migrants, that is. And uh, the red curve, that is the migrants overall, well, there are of course a lot of European migrants also in Denmark from neighboring countries. And there you see almost no difference to native Danes. So I leave the shape of the cumulative plot to your imagination. I think you can guess what that would look like. And then in some studies, this was compared to Germany, where you see that, oh, you know, 
these native Germans and these guests in Germany, well, it's very comparable. I mean, that is the um, darker blue and the lighter blue curve here. I mean, sure, the native Germans, they pay more taxes, but it's, you know, it's not that big of a difference. But then you see that data was taken from 1996. And this is the youngest data I found. This is really a long time ago. And I wonder how this data looks like in the present. Once again, if you have any source material here, any data for me, that would be greatly appreciated. I couldn't find any. But as you know, between now and the year 2000 or 96, a lot has happened. Maybe something like 2015 for starters. So how does it look like afterwards now? How does it look like in more recent times? And I found data here from 2018. The source is the Danish finance ministry and there is a different uh, distinction that is added here. Very interesting. They say Danish origin people, so native Danes, and then other Western, well, guests or immigrants. And then there are non-Western immigrants. And then there is this group of men up <laughs> man apt uh, yeah and that means um that is the middle east north africa and then pakistan and turkey oh excuse me that was insensitive i have to say turkey now or something like that right they changed their name in english and there you can see that of course of course just fiscally speaking just strictly economically speaking there is well a problematic nature um, that this particular group this very odd and specific ensemble of guests in denmark seems to be having it seems like that this group is never even coming close to contributing to public finances and that in a country where solidarity and um, group think and teamwork and we all together achieve this is very important this kind of mindset you know Scandinavian countries they have this kind of mindset and they tried to include other people into that system but when they realize that uh, well this doesn't even come close to be functional in any shape or form then they become a little bit skeptical and maybe you have to dig a little deeper in Scandinavian relationships and in exploring the soul of the Scandinavian if you want to understand why social democrats, uh, the more national social democrats in Denmark are becoming skeptical while at least most of the elected officials in Sweden don't have these doubts and scruples at least until now. They also will reach a breaking point but I think there is a fundamental difference maybe between Danes and Swedish people and they also don't like each other very much as you can easily see from from pop culture and the literature and also their history but they do have a different mindset that is for sure so towards the end i want to venture a little guess as to the nature of the problem here in germany in the absence of any official studies or numbers well i just have to say that the people that came more recently uh, well they don't have this kind of work ethic and they don't have this kind of education as previous generations of guests or immigrants in Germany had and also and that is the other side of the equation or the inequality I might have to say is that the um, welfare payments and the accessibility of our welfare state has been increased and ramped up quite dramatically since 2015 and in the data of 96 that is not at all in there of course so now almost from day one they are treated and sometimes even treated better than the normal German unemployed person or welfare recipient and they get a lot of other goodies in addition to that and that is why I think that the situation cannot be too different from what is shown on these plots from 2018 data from Denmark and it also is no coincidence I think that I cannot find any official data that the German government just doesn't publish data like this for Germany it's really mind-boggling I can't understand that at all a true mystery. Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you today. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about that. And as always, Servus Kameraden.